here, masonry conceals its secrets uh, from all except the adepts and the sages. And it gives a deliberate lie concerning what those symbols mean. In other words, here we have a double-headed eagle. We have 33 stars. By the way, all the miners come out wearing this big Chilean star. There were 33 stars. Okay? Uh, 33 stars here. And the double-headed eagle and the crown and the triangle, the number 33 and the rays and Ordo Abkeo. And they say, now, if you read this book, what, what we tell you it means, it, it doesn't really mean that. It means means something else. We're, we're lying to you. We're going to conceal the secret. So watch this. The Jesus now. Is it the real Jesus or another Jesus? The Jesus that is in this Bible is revealed to everyone and concealed by no man. The Jesus that he is referring to is concealed. In fact, he is the lost word. Here's the revealed word. And the, the Jesus of Masonry is the lost word. He, in fact, the Jesus of Masonry, according to Dan Brown in the lost symbol, is actually, um, he's buried in a pit. And his number is 33. That's, that's, that's the lost word. That's their word. Okay. So anyway, Hall says... Concealed within the emblematic figures, allegories, and rituals of the ancients is a secret doctrine concerning the inner mysteries of life, which doctrine has been preserved in toto or totally among a small band of initiated minds since the beginning of the world. Departing, these illumined philosophers left their formula that others too might attain to understanding. But... Lest these secret processes fall into uncultured hands and be perverted, the great arcanum, which means the great secret, was always concealed in symbol or allegory. And those who, today can, uh, those who can today discover its lost keys may open with them a treasure house of philosophic, scientific, and religious truths. Now, I will tell you that this Bible is the key to everything. It is the absolute key of everything. And what I don't want to do in this is try to bring in all the information that I know about everything that I'm going to deal with here. We have uh, videos concerning this. Uh, one is called the Freemason Symbols Revealed, the Mother of All Secrets, Jesus Christ, DNA, the Holy Bible, Triple Helix, um, the Da Vinci Code revealed uh, the Babel conspiracy. I mean, I'm just I'm bringing in the whole group here of videos that we have dealing with this. Uh, the, the the video chaos that we did back in uh, January, February, I believe. All of these tie into this one event here, and let's look at the symbolism of this event. When it comes to rituals itself, rituals uh, basically are, uh, remember, we, we're dealing with two gods here. We're dealing with a God who doesn't need rituals in order to do what he wants to do for you to begin with. And then we have the God over here that says that everything that you do has to be done perfectly or I won't show up. I've described these gods as beasts, being like beasts in nature. Dogs have a nature about them that there are certain places they're comfortable with, certain places they're not. Moles. Moles have a nature. There are certain places they're comfortable with, certain they're not. Horses and lions and giraffes and iguanas have certain places and certain things that they'll do if the conditions are right and certain that they're not. Um, we're heading into deer season here in Missouri. And deer season is designed in the state of Missouri around the mating season of deer. And we all know in Missouri that if it doesn't get cold enough in this state, when deer season comes around, you can forget it because they're not going to go in rut. They're not going to go in their mating season. So these, these gods are beasts. And certain conditions have to apply. Aleister Crowley, the famed occultist from the late eight, uh, 1800s, early 1900s, designed and built this house called the Bullskin House. And it was designed in a particular manner so that he could summon this demon that he called Lamb, you know, this big gray-headed alien Lamb guy. And he had to, had to build it in a certain way and in a certain fashion or this demon would never show up. Um, Eliphas Levi. Uh, summon this demon that, I mean, he just looks a lot like Yoda here from Star Wars. And notice, I mean, he's got these candles lit. He's got these things drawn on the ground. He's saying the right words. He's holding his hands up in the air. All of these things have to be done in a very prescribed, perfect manner. 
or the summoning of the devil or the God just will not happen. And that is the nature of doing these rituals and these rites. And anybody, and I don't care what church it is, they're telling you. Now, we're, we, have this, we have this little thing that we do. Then if you do this, I've seen deliverance ministries perform rituals on people as if the ritual is going to exercise the demons or do whatever. People don't fall for that trap. And that's exactly what it is. It's a trap. Uh, we mentioned 9-11 earlier. The Pentagon ritual, the Great Rite ritual, which plays into this whole minor, Chilean minor ritual. The Great Rite ritual, the male symbol of an airplane or a missile or whatever it is you want, uh, going into the Pentagon or the pentagram structure, which is the image of a woman who is sprawled out. And the Great Rite ritual has everything to do with the male and the female, the sons of God and the daughters of men coming together. We saw earlier that that ritual up on a billboard here, the angelic man touching the earth woman, and they are connecting together. That's what all of this iconography and this imagery is all about. It's about Performing these things in the right manner so that you can invoke the power of the God. So the first thing that we deal with here is we have the number of minors. We have 33. Now I'm going to read some things that kind of put some things together in your mind for you. So you see how this number was repeated um, throughout this whole ritual, throughout this whole ceremony. Uh, they were in a pit. They were in a chamber. And they were brought, and it's very dark down there, and they were brought from darkness to light. That happens to be one of the main themes of Freemasonry and practically all occult religions uh, is that they're being brought from darkness darkness into light. So you get that idea of 33 being brought from darkness to light. 33 is a number associated with the Antichrist. We have 33 miners. The date of the mine collapse was 8510, which equals 23. That's the number of chromosome pairs in your cell. They drilled for 33 days. They reached the pit on day 66. The number of books in the Bible, or 33 times 2. They ascended out of the pit on the 69th day, which is 23 times 3. They were rescued, and, and, and let me say this. You know, remember I, earlier, and, I, and I, I, I'm not a prophet. I'm not a predictor. I'm, not, I'm a lousy weatherman. This is, this is actually the first time I've been right about something. But Sunday, uh, what was that, 10, 10, 10? Uh, I sent word to Chad up in Detroit, and I said, Chad, the miners are going to be released out of that pit on Wednesday, 10, 13, 2010. And so we're watching. We're watching. And at exactly 12.11 Chilean time, 12.11 is 23. On exactly 12, at 12.11 a.m. Chilean time, on Wednesday, October the 13th, 2010, the first miner came up. And then subsequently, so they said, man, it's going to take us a day and a half to get these guys out. It was all done in less than 20 hours. 22 hours, precisely. 22 is the number for revelation. I want you to think about that. 22 hours, and they were all taken out on the exact same day. 10, 13, plus 10 equals 33. And even the very capsule that they were taken out in reveals something. Here's that logo here. Is a close-up of it. Ordo ab KO, uh, the number 33, the crown. These are all references to the Antichrist. Um, here's a close-up view of it, of a different sort here. We have the number 33, 33 rays coming out of there. This has everything to do with someone who is a king. Uh, the rights of Freemasonry, of the Scottish rite of Freemasonry, equal 33. Now, there's 13 in the York rite, and uh, we'll discern something that goes along with that here in just a little bit. But let me just throw this in to you as sort of, uh, did you know this? And I was sharing this with a guy the other day, and he's going, no way. And I said, way. Um, pope John Paul I, remember him? He was pope after Pope Paul. He came in, and to be pope, he found out that there, 
of all things, there was a deep, dark, secret mystery religion operating inside of another deep, dark, secret mystery religion. Uh, he found out that there were Freemasons in the Vatican and they were actually going to control everything that was going on. And there was a ritual that took place in 1963 uh, called the, uh, the ritual, the enthronement ceremony of the fallen angel Lucifer. He found out about all these things and was going to kick some people out of the Vatican for that and for some banking things that were going on. And they found him dead. 33 days after he became Pope. Do you remember Timothy McVeigh? You know, the Oklahoma City bomber, or one of them. The Alfred P. Murrow building. By the way, Alfred P. Murrow was a 33rd degree Mason. By the way, the Alfred P. Murrow building, I'm getting ahead of myself here, stood for 33 days after it was bombed and then they tore it down. Timothy McVeigh, they waited until at, they waited until 23 days after his 33rd birthday to execute him. David Koresh, Waco, Highway 77, he was 33 years old. Mohammed Atta, the pilot of Flight 11, September 11, 2001. Guess how old he was? He was 33 years old. The World Trade Towers, 1968, they began steel construction on the frame. 33 years later, they came down. The Alfred P. Mirror building, Milk mentioned it a while ago, named after a 33rd degree Mason. Okay? So, I mean, I'm telling you, symbols abound. Um, JFK, he was 46 years old, number of chromosomes. Okay? 33rd parallel, Dallas. At the end of an obelisk street structure in Dallas, Texas, Dealey Plaza, the site of a former Masonic lodge in Dallas, Texas, gunned down. You have Babylon, Iraq on the 33rd parallel. You have a city called Phoenix, Arizona on the 33rd parallel. The first atomic weapon ever used, tested at the Alamogordo site in New Mexico, 33rd parallel. The last one ever used uh, on a city in time of war was Nagasaki, Japan on the 33rd parallel. Now, remember, we have two Jesuses. We have one Jesus who died when he was 33 years old. We have another one, a beast rising up out of the pit. The phrase, the beast, is mentioned exactly 33 times in the New Testament of my old King James Bible right here. Okay, So which, which Jesus is this one talking about? We're, we're going to get more clues here. By the way, let me, let me deal with this Jesus thing for a minute. Why, why was Jesus 33? What was the significance of it? Because the Bible says in Colossians that Jesus made a show of his enemies openly, triumphing over them in the cross. In other words, when Jesus was on the cross, everything about him was symbolic. Those symbol, symbols are revealed in the pages of the scriptures always. They're not concealed. They're revealed in the Bible. He was 33 because he was conquering the power of death. He was conquering the Antichrist. We have the enemies of Israel when Moses and Joshua went in. Moses killed two of the kings. Joshua killed 31 of them. That's 33. These were 33 kings that were ruling over the promised land and had to be destroyed so that God's people could go in. That's what Jesus was dying. His death was all about. The, the defeat of his enemies. The defeat of the beast in the last days. That's what he was showing when he was nailed to the cross. Jesus said as the serpent, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, the serpent is the enemy of Christ, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Why? Was Jesus the devil? No. But he was showing the defeat of the serpent. By the way, the serpent, Kundalini, 33 bones. He was showing the defeat of the serpent on the cross. He defeated, he was showing the defeat of his enemies when he was 33 years old. The 33 being referred to by Pike and Manley Hall and Dan Brown is none other than the beast. <clears throat> and where is the beast? Revelation 17:8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not <clears throat> and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. So here we have 33 miners trapped in a pit. They ascended on 10-13-10, which equals 33. This Masonic rituals include the death and the resurrection of Hiram.